Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your fleet admiral and host, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew this side of some rock hard abs. That's right. Vice Admiral Eric is here with an eye on all those starships at the beginning of this episode. His 3D printer already spun up. That's right. They were pretty. Uh, Sub Commander Draft is here and has had enough of these Vulcan logic purists. And finally, Commander MC is here, who personally transported in my DMs to make sure that I knew that a rant was coming this week. I'm going to rant with you, so yes. don't don't you worry. Uh, welcome back, guys. How we doing? How we doing? Well, ready to talk about some discovery. Ready to talk about some discovery. Yeah, Can't that was Eric. It's fun. Oh, Eric's Eric's doing something else, so he's we're going to stall. He's distracted. I'm um, fine. fine. We are getting we're getting the seal of approval in the chat for the new pre-show music, which Yay. is good. Everybody really likes it and they liked it even better because the track is actually called Discovery, <laughs> which is awesome. It was a labor of love to find. Um yeah. So, there's that. So, I'm glad you guys like it. Um because I'm tired of getting Being. flagged. Yeah, mm -hmm. enough enough of that. BS. By Brazil? <laughs> By Brazil. By and like Latin America. Brazil you know? specifically? Yeah. Wow. It's like Latin America. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it's like their stupid AI algorithm. Um yeah, boy. Let's get into this one, guys. This week, get in. We are going back to Trill. We break down Wilson Crew's amazing performance in this one, and uh, we'll actually be talking to the man himself, uh, Wilson Cruz, to uh, talk about how he got ready to play Janal. I got to interview him at the red carpet last week for the Disco Season 5 premiere. And it's also part two of uh, my interview with Sonequa Martin Green. So, uh, yeah, she talks about this episode and well, just the awesome casting that this show always seems to have. Um, plus, Rainer's disastrous first look at his crew. Uh, we are going to break it all down. But first, Eric, a good sir, we need to thank our amazing patron collective at the Ready Room level and above. Yes, of course. Thank you to Simon Steger. Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett, Tallulah, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, Joe Saperito, Noe Santo, Kung Hui, Takako Nagumo, Fernanda Nogales, SMK, Laura Linderman, Colin Davidson, Jesco, Michael Graham, Emily and Travis, Gildara, Cassie, Nay, wait, Nay, Nar, Nay, Nar, Nay, <laughs> Nar, great, um, Maggie Light, Tyrannokilicus, Wayne Ritz, Sko Navark, Sean, Jay Howard, Anna Yurdadon, Mahalani Uchiyama, Matt Harker, Davey Willett, Tara Paulin, Slope 74, Rude Parakeet, Joshua Miller, Adam Sanders, Eris Spengian, Lanky Guy, Aaron, Aaron Walkie, uh, Carl Angoli, I lost my spot, Michael Kwan, TJ, Mayor, Caitlin, Elizabeth Dean, there's so many of you guys now, Gene McMahon, Connect, Sedano 317, Puka Hair, Puka Har, uh, Three Fries Short, Cat Tiffy, Tip, uh, Trippin' the Reed Alert over a Pineapple, Sean Manning, Congressional Baseball Fan, Chris Waterman, RHCB, Martin Simpson, Seven Rasm Rasmussen, Anna F., Norman Butch Butchwald, uh, David Prime Hildebrand, Taryn J. Robinson, Ensign Lex A. Pro. Prokes? Pro. Purdue. Purdue, Pro? I think. Okay. And our three newest collective members, Eric the Red, Trouble, and Jamie Roberts. Hey, new patrons. What's up? Y'all rock. Uh, it's good to have new folks. Speaking of patron, I know I owe people stickers for watch alongs and new patron stickers. I was going to do it today. As I was telling these guys, I was in New Jersey for part of the day. Um, sorry if you're from there. <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at for that one. Uh, so they are coming. I promise this weekend I don't have a lot to do. So hopefully I'm going to sit in this chair, mail some mail. We're going to get it done. So. Um, before we move on, a big thank you also to our amazing bad rolls, our executive producers, our Trill Guardians, our grumpy first officers, Simon Sager, Commander Chris, the Chief Ernesto Castagna, Chris Waterman, and Tara Pollen. You guys keep the spore drive running. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's get into some news, some news. Um, Trek Long Island. Trek Long Island is just over a month away. We have a panel. There are going to be amazing guests. There are going to be other amazing panels. We are actually like straight up in the vendors room. 
a lot of stuff going on at Trek Long Island. So instead of listening to me talk about it, you could watch this ad for Trek Long Island instead. Hit it. Attention all Starfleet personnel. New York's only fan-run Star Trek convention, Trek Long Island is back this summer. Get ready for three days of sci-fi fun celebrating your favorite franchise in the Empire State. Meet the stars from Trek shows spanning different eras, including Melissa Navia and Yutiti Padaki from Strange New Worlds, Gabrielle Ruiz from Lower Decks, Armin Shimmerman, Chase Masterson, J.G. Hertzler, and Kitty Swink from DS9, Ethan Phillips from Voyager, Janet Kidder, Tara Rosling, Conrad Coates, and Elias Defexis from Discovery, and many more, including celebrities who haven't been at a Star Trek convention in years, like Clyde Kasatsu, Natalia Nogalich, and Daphne Ashbrook. Come meet your fellow fans. Take in a panel with your favorite podcasters. Enjoy Dinner with the Stars, featuring live musical performances. Meet authors, artists, and musicians, and so many more during this epic three-day event brought to you by the talented and inclusive community that makes Star Trek go at warp speed. Trek Long Island takes place from May 31st to June 2nd at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Hop Hog, New York. Visit treklongisland.com for tickets, exclusive packages, and more information. Trek Long Island, going kindly this summer. Back. Hey, we are back. Uh, Trek Long Island. And Tara says they left out Armin Shimmerman. No, they didn't. He was like number three in that in yeah. that video. Mm -hmm. Armin Shimmerman so is, in good. fact, coming, uh, which is going to mm -hmm. be awesome. I've never met Armin. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a fun con. We're going to be there. We have lots of fun little surprises planned, including a big get together with the Duras sisters. Uh, more on that very, 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 very soon. Who wants to read our big news, which is why we have all the fancy new music and all that crap? Who wants to read it? Someone. <laughs> Eric's like, oh my God. Okay, if they're going to be, I will do it. We have hit a uh, thousand subs on YouTube which uh, we've got the new music and everything because we are actually able to monetize our YouTube channel now, which is totally awesome. So thank you to everybody for subscribing to us. And uh, we're already at uh, 3,000 followers on Threads as well. So you guys are completely awesome and we love you for being loyal. Uh, and now it's the goal of trying to get to 2K. So uh, tell everybody, tell one friend. Yeah, there you go. Make, there new, you go. make new accounts, just sub again. Fine. Do yeah. we know more than 1,000 persons? Well, we know these 1,000, and if they just make a second account and subscribe again, we'll get to 2,000. Oh, there's pirate. YouTube flagging us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, And then Giraffe, uh, I like yeah. your hat tonight. Thank you. It is from Heroes and Villain. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can you see it? Yes. It's um, nice. Remember that for your first order, you can get 20% off at Heroes and Villain by using our code STRANGE, like strange new pod. Because we're and, strange. Yeah? Uh, because huh? we're strange. strange. Yeah. Um, they have Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel, everything. And um, yeah, I, I have a lot of this. I actually have these super cool Star Wars. Don't look at the mess. But they're like my uh, makeup. Is there bags. a spork in there? I swear I saw a spork in there. Maybe. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, sure. Uh, we have uh, our friend Admiral Funnest Frontier, Joe, in the chat, who says, uh, I love y'all. I share your stuff all the time, which I know for a fact is true. We appreciate all you. Right. Same thing, Takako. Uh, Takako hosted a Star Trek room on Clubhouse yesterday. Mentioned us. So a big thank you for getting the word out. You guys all rock. Um... I think we're like moving right along tonight, which is never Here a bad thing. Let's um let's tap those personal transporters and uh, head into the strange new loop. I'm gonna just have that be the strange loop button. We don't need to hit it twice. I don't know if y'all read the outline, so you might have to like no, quickly I prep for this one. <laughs> this is one of the harder strange new loops we've ever done. This really is. I'm I really mean. sorry I didn't read in advance. Yeah, you should. I don't read the outline. You should have. <laughs> oh, I also didn't write it until like four or five hours ago. I mean, like um, that's it. That's true. If you were reporting to your first officer for the first time and needed to use 20 words or less to make an impression, what would 
they be. Chat, let us know as well. Are we are we in Star Trek or is it just us, like normal? I mean, people? it's you, you as a Starfleet officer. So yeah, oh, you, so we're you, Starfleet you, officer. We're, so I can't go like I really like Star Trek and stuff like this. No, <laughs> but you, but you can go. No milk products, please. Only <laughs> lactose free. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a tough one. So uh, you can just I said my fly, piece already. And I, could, I like Eric's, but I'm going to make you go again anyway. MC, yeah. you're, you're good. I'll go. I'll All go. Right. Um, no idea why I'm on this ship, but I learn really fast. Was that 17? That's like 17, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. All right. Draft and Eric are thinking. <laughs> Shoot County. <laughs> Uh, I'll try and go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All those starships are be are beautiful. I really can't wait to get promoted and serve on one as captain 19. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being I'm being super like I'm gung ho. I want to make it to captain someday. I want to be the Evil transporter clone. <laughs> that was not twenty at all. No, it was under. I, I don't 20, need I twenty. Twenty words or less. <laughs> twenty less. words or less. <laughs> Mine are all um, generally eight. P. Lewis in the chat goes. The last time they made me do this, they gave me chips. Reno's line from this episode. Yeah. Yep, it's true. I mean, let's face it. If any of us said any of these things to Rainer, he would want it like the shorter, the better. Yep. Um, the oh, yeah. I, I don't know how many that is. I am pretty sure I speak all the languages of the Federation. Don't ask me how I did this. 19. 19! <laughs> well done. Well done. That wasn't too hard. Uh, Tara writes... Where is the moopsie? A good answer. Um, if you keep them coming in the chat, we'll read them as we go on. Um, that was a fun Stranger Loop. I like to mix it up every now and then. Uh, yeah. We're we're moving, man. 16 minutes in. And that's not even including, that is including the pre-show. So uh, let's do it. It is our review of episode 503 of Star Trek Discovery. Just, did I just say Discovery? Like, Discovery. Discover, like did. rubber ducky Discovery. Discovery. Um, it's been a long day, sir. It's been a long day. Discovery. Uh, no, it is our review of episode 503, Janal. And our order tonight is not going to go uh, Hawk first because Hawk is, uh, he's on a shuttle. He's going to, he's going to that Federation Council meeting. He'll be back next week. Um, or he's in the holodeck. Or he's in the holodeck watching lives. Fallout, according to Eric. So <laughs> um, <laughs> that's probably more accurate. Our order tonight will go Giraffe, MC, Eric, <laughs> followed by myself <laughs> the power i have the power wait before we go we have a few more congressional baseball fan the logic behind this request to use only 20 words or less eludes me i politely decline to i like that um <laughs> but uh, is that Colin, 20 words or less i think it is yes so it worked yeah right one yeah. that's too illogical much, too much math too much I, math. I don't like I math. refuse. No, uh, Colin writes, I work in the sick bay. I don't have time for this. I like that <laughs> one. That was pretty much Pollard's answer. She's yeah. like, I've seen like death. Fuck off. Get out of here. Um, I'm done. Yeah, let's do this one. Um, we're going to go. We're going to do the, this by the plots of the the, the episode. Uh, we're going to do Trill first. So we had to Trill. We have the Jantara ritual and Janal leading Michael and Book into the wild and those animals and Janal just being wild himself. Um, so 503 continues the treasure hunt about that thing that we won't talk about uh, and begins with Michael and co heading to Trill um, after answering a secret question, which I thought was kind of funny. Like they could have been down and answered the question, right? Like they didn't mm -hmm. need to do it on the ship. Anyway, uh, after answering correctly, uh, they're allowed to beam down and are informed that Janal, um, the Janal Bix's symbiote is still alive and in an aging host. Uh, Culber volunteers for the Jantar ritual uh, last seen in Deep Space Nine, which is a cool throwback. Uh, and we meet Janal, newly discovered abs and all, which I will not get over that line. Uh, thoughts on all of this, Draft? Oh, we're like starting like right by like the middle of the episode. <laughs> yeah, we're going in it because it doesn't like this episode doesn't pick up till the middle of the episode. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, OK. 
first of all, I'm not really, uh, I know people are going to be mad at me. So disclaimer, I'm sorry, but I'm not very excited about Trill. Like, is it that I don't the think people third, are mad. There is kind of a general consensus. Yeah. Third time they're going to Trill. Like, I, I, what is happening? We can't have Strange New Worlds anymore. Like, <laughs> can't we go like to like random planets? So yeah, Trill, I was like, meh, again, uh, that dude. Again, I, I'm going to tell you why they did it on the ship, because that's one less decor that they have to pull up. Oh, yeah, good so, point. Fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, like, I don't know. I, I was just waiting for the, you know, trail shenanigans like they did in season three. Was it four? Uh, season three. Yeah. Three, yeah. Uh, um, because I like this kind of, like, telepathic stuff, but... To be honest, they could have done it to any other planet and it would have been fine. I think it was just a, ma a way to uh, to retire Grey in the same plotline. Yeah. Um, so they were like, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the two things at the same time. And like that, we don't have like to cast new people. We're retiring that plotline and we're going to trill again. And I mean... They could have had like an actual another character that would have been fun. Anyway, uh, I was not really excited. Until where do you want me to go? Because like, do we go all the way to the, go, the go strange up animals? Until, no, no, no. Up uh, right uh, until like they they hear the strange animals. I think I think the good thing about this is the opportunity for Wilson Cruz to really like show his talent because he was the best thing in this episode. He was so funny. He's so talented. The way he can conjure up like just another person right away was really cool. And I don't know, the, the Trill thing, I was just going for the ride. I was not excited by it. I was not like over the moon by it. I mean, it's episode three. It's normal. They do a little a boring one-ish. Uh, <laughs> and um. Oh, shoot. I wanted to say something and I forgot. This guy really works out. <laughs> <laughs> this guy really works out. Yeah. I love it. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. It was like, it, it was super funny. Oh, I just think also it's kind of crazy and, and dumb ish to put one of your crew, one of your clue into something that can die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that symbiote could have died at any yeah freaking given time and it was like the second clue like it's a big gamble but i was mm -hmm. just like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna a little suspend suspend, my yeah. Like, yeah yeah but yeah i was not super excited by trill like it's mostly pools with guys wearing red i'm and the costumes are not like cool the well, place and is the same one and i i i'm not a trill like aficionado so what annoys me the most about going back to trill in this is that we've we've seen the same exact location on trail twice now. And like when we went mm -hmm. to trail on deep space nine, we saw like, a, we've seen like a metropolis. We saw like how they live. Mm -hmm. It's just like, take us out of the fucking caves. Like if we're going to oh. do like, I don't know. And they start it's... the story by saying like trail is a very, very big planet. And I was like, okay, I have no idea what that means. Yeah. So I was like, are we going to see something? No, we see the exact same fucking place with the same people wearing the same thing. And then we go to a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we yeah. go to like the same quarry where like they shoot everything. It's the new Vasquez rocks, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah show I us the just... green waters of Trill. I think they're the waters are supposed to be very green. Well, isn't it in the wasn't it in the riddle that there's something about lakes and I mean I suppose we saw the lakes. Well, I don't know. I was like, okay, we don't get to know about the symbiote. We don't get to know much. We, this episode is just like going along like with the plot, you know. And then you just get a new clue, and then it's good. Well, yeah, I yeah. I was in for the ride, but not excited about it. Yeah, fair. MC? Okay, so I actually warned Julian that I had a couple rants for this episode, and this is one of them. Uh, Giraffe has covered several of the points, but I'm going to be more um, aggro about it. Um, first of all, you mentioned that we haven't seen the Jantara ritual since Deep Space Nine. No, we actually saw it in Season 3 of Discovery because they used it with Grey. Was that was um, a Jantara rit ritual? That was a Jantara ritual because the Jantara ritual is the only fucking ritual the troll oh, has. Which you mean in season four to put the consciousness into oh, Grey's yeah. yeah, new body? Four, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know if they, yeah. it, it was the same thing because of, um, yeah, okay. 
Got yeah, you. no, it's it's yeah. the it's legit. Like, ex- except for I guess the one that Adira did. Um, that one was that like, was different. Vaguely different. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like the only the only ritual that they've actually established for the trill is the Jantara, and almost like every single major trill episode has been about the Jantara ritual. And this really fucking annoys me because, like, okay, like when you think of the Vulcans, you think of mind melds, but you don't have entire episodes around a mind meld and they're not exact you know and when they do have them in episodes they're not exactly the same every time they appear but every time the john tara ritual appears it's always one of our regulars gets to act like another person and yet, yes it does get to show these characters range but it's fucking boring like okay you know i i thought wilson cruz did a good job but i didn't see why it was important um, and as, you know, Giraffe said, putting this clue into a living body, that's like, we've seen how delicate the symbiont is. Like, like many times Jadzia nearly died, Dax nearly died because of the, like the delicate balance in the symbiont and the host. Uh, when Jadzia died, the Dax symbiont nearly died and they had to throw it into a random person. Um, because yeah, uh, Esri was a random person. And I also just on a personal, as somebody who does, uh, enjoy Dax a lot, I did not care for the fact that they implied that Dax is dead because, uh, this, um, this Bix symbiont is from around the same time. And Bix is apparently very old for a symbiont, you know, the symbiont dies at the end um and it they said that the symbiont's only been hanging on for the this just to have this clue you know given out and then which is also so dumb it's like just fucking write it down and then die if you want to die so badly um but was okay to be fair though mc wasn't dax already a super old symbiont by the time that we meet them in in ds9 the amount of like yeah that's the other thing. It's like goes uh, back all the way to TOS and be and before. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I Dax actually is was not an incredibly old symbiont because uh, Dax hosts tend to d- die early. They do not have long life spans, except for like when you get to um, Curzon, who is like the only one who held on to the symbiont for like several decades. Um, but this is the first time we've actually had like a expiration date put on the, right fair the trail yeah. Yeah. um and i thought one of the nice things about bringing trill into uh discovery was oh we could have you know a very ancient dax symbiont come up and then you are paying homage to like the 24th century era of star trek without you know needing to bring uh jonathan frakes in even though we would all like to make stuff here. Um, you could pay a tribute to that. Um, and also, we haven't had enough references to Deep Space Nine, so let's get some more. Uh, so I did not care for that. Uh, and, yeah, I just... The, having it be Trill, seriously, like, the only reason to do it was to get Gray back into the storyline so that you could get him out of the storyline. And I'll be talking about that later. Oh, me too. Um... <laughs> Uh, where is it in the chat? Where did it go? Uh, congressional baseball fan wrote, I'm just glad that Bix never was hosted in a serial killer uh, like Dax. Yeah, there's that one. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, up. Eric. I mean, how do we know? Uh, true, we don't. Fair, 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 fair. Um, I wasn't excited going back to chill. I thought it was neat. I just assumed we were going back to see Gray, which I think everyone <laughs> sort of assumed. Um, the, the question was, you know, it was silly. It was fun, I guess. Um, I don't know. It, the beginning didn't really impress me the, of this episode too much. Um, and they could have filmed this in the winter, so maybe they couldn't go outside to, to film it. Uh, let's see. Ritual. You know, honestly, this whole beginning part was like, eh, whatever. As soon as Culber started acting differently, that's when I was like, okay, fun. I get to see yeah. him act really. Yeah. Really funny and like an old man, an old man funny, um, especially with his abs. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll always take a reference to Wilson Cruz and his thirst trap photos. Damn straight, damn straight. 
and hopefully they'll do some Star Trek versions of that. Um, other than that, I like I, gray and gray didn't really do anything at the beginning either, and I was really looking forward. I thought they would be more like integral, Involved. right? Yeah. Was, there was a lot of explanations going on in this episode. Like it was not like show don't tell. It was definitely like tell tell it tell was tell, an tell, 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 fest, tell 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 like, tell tell yeah. tell tell tell. And yeah. I was like, just to do something. <laughs> yeah. And then they didn't really do anything, especially especially yeah. with Gray, which is unfortunate. Um yeah. and I guess we'll get to that in a bit anyway. Yeah. Uh I don't really know what else to say. Like I it was fine. It just took a long time to get there. Like, there was so much talking ahead of the time, too. It's like mm. there's introducing Rainer, and then there's talking about how big Trill is. I think you mentioned that, MC. Or Giraffe, you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, you, Why, you why do we... And I like to give a number, like, right. I have a reference. Like, I don't know how big the Earth is. Like, I know Jupiter is big, but... Like, right. And, like... <laughs> how big is Trill? <laughs> listen, um, I, I, I sometimes disagree about, like, Strange New Worlds and, you know, what it classifies as Strange New Worlds, but, like... This is supposed to be like a la Indiana Jones and a treasure hunt, right? It's like, oh, but we're going back to this planet and it's the same set and it's this. And it's not that I didn't like the episode, right? Like, I like the episode. It's fine. Um, it's definitely, I think, the weakest of the four that we got. Um, it's just, it it just was, right? Like, and, and like everybody else said, I'm beating a dead horse here. Like, it didn't get good until Wilson Cruz went, like, trying to get an Emmy, you know? Don't you it, think... Don't you think it's for them a good way to it's the only opportunity they have for the crew to actually talk to one of the scientists? I think they were no, like, it's, at one no, point it's they need great. to talk to one of them right. and how and it's you know cool. who and can I like still that. be alive. I yeah. like that. You know, but my hmm, hmm. my other thing with that is if, what we know about like oh, this is gonna go into something completely off topic, but like you know, <laughs> it's like the thirty first or thirty second century. And they have all this crazy hollow technology and who knows like how many like actual hollows are serving in Starfleet now, like because they have freaking mm -hmm. hollow emitters everywhere, like hollow rights, baby, all of the doctor. I, uh, part of me this season keeps thinking and maybe I'm literally the only one. Why don't they just build a hollow? And, and I also have a feeling that after a certain point, like Starfleet started scanning consciousnesses and like mm -hmm. build a hollow and put the consciousness of one of these doctors and I know they said, oh, don't you, I, don't you, uh, maybe one of the doctors is the doctor. Well, that true, that too. There's right. that, oh that would be really like, good. There's like two more, right? How many they were there? They, well, that's the thing. They said they scrubbed, they scrubbed all their names from the record. So I know it makes that more difficult. Mm -hmm. it, it could be, right? No, but like they scrubbed their name from the record like that they were part of this. I think that everybody knew Dr. Velik mm -hmm. existed, but they didn't know that they were part of that right. task force. Yeah. Right. So we have Dr. Velik, we have the Trill, Janal, we have one who died. And I think they said they were fought. Yeah, I think there's two more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's two more. Maybe one of them is a doctor. Yeah. 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 But in terms like of a hologram, like like recreating one of them as as a hologram, um, like they had like that technology during Voy like that happened in a Voyager episode. Like uh, yeah. remember like the, the doctor like put together like a, a scientist that I, I think was a Cardassian yeah. scientist. Yeah, Card yeah. The, yeah. And had to do and and had to do surgery on um on Bolana, but Bolana was like, no, absolutely not, no way, yeah. but did it against her will. Um it's just an interesting thought. I I do like that we get to talk to the doctor and like Janal's cool. Like Janal's a really cool character and I loved mm -hmm. what Wilson Cruz did. It just trill. But um, like when when Bashir shows up at the end of the season, like <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just not oh man, um, Wayner, hello all. I've been watching on TV and forgot about the chat. That's okay. I mean, sometimes yeah. we forget about the chat, even though we love you. We get into the zone. Um, let's move on because we all feel the same about the beginning. We can go back and forth. Yeah, we can. Yeah, uh, Janal. So I do like this. Janal explains that they scrubbed their identities and kind of any record about like what they were doing and what the progenitors did um, after finding the tech uh, and one of the, them dying trying to activate it. Uh, so they do that to prevent it. Get they they scrub out all the information to prevent it getting into the wrong hands because this was all during the Dominion War. And he and Janal says something great. Everybody was looking for an enemy in someone, right? And then we know that about the Dominion War. Imagine if that technology did fall into, I don't know, the founder's hands. Oh, boy. Um, so I like, again, another throwback to Deep Space Nine there. Um, the nat these native, like, bug, cloak, life forms attack uh, Michael and Book. 
Uh, Janal just watches along with a smile on his face um, as Michael and Book finally realize that it's a nesting ground. Uh, Book finally communicates with them and they're let free. Janal, that was the test, like what they would do finding new life. Uh, they they passed. Janal gives them the next puzzle piece. What about what do we think about the this action scene with the the flying cloaked insect toyed things and Wilson Cruises? By the way, before I, this is completely off topic, on Discovery, Jurg pointed out there is an insectoid serving on Discovery. Yeah, like Zindi. Like a Zindi, yeah, Zindi is serving on Discovery, which is pretty cool. Nice. Anyway. What did we think of the action set piece and Wilson Cruz, Cruz's performance as Janal? I have so many questions about this situation. Um, so Trill is a member of the Federation, right? Um, mm -hmm. These animals must be known in some way or form in a database or something. Like Zora, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know they didn't know they were going to go there, but they have computers literally like in their freaking insignia like can they ask about this animal like if i'm walking in a canyon and i hear like rah, rah, you know <laughs> going to be like what is that and when somebody tells me the name i'm gonna look it up yeah we can literally do that on our iphones now. i would look that up i'd be like mm -mm 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 -mm. and like the fact that they're sentient and intelligent and able to understand what a phaser is should be somewhere in a database anyway again I'm, I'm going to suspend my disbelief for a minute. <laughs> and I'm just going to throw here now. Um, you know that conversation that he has with Burnham about like, what are you searching? And she's like, oh, you know, what am I searching? And maybe we're going to get like to uh, the origin of life. I'm going to say that now. And I want everybody to be my witness. But if the Cisco Burnham, I'm going to be fucking mad. Okay, like if she ends up like disappearing, becoming a prophet, a higher being, going oh my back God. with the progenitors, because they're writing her out of Star Trek, because they wrote off uh, Avery, like he cannot come back, mm -hmm. like Cisco cannot come back, he's mm -hmm. gone with the prophets, right? But look, we had no, Kirk they said like, no, they didn't write him off. He said he no, was but coming. But you know what I mean. Like he's not gonna come. We're gonna we're gonna see him. Well, that was that was on like, that's action. on Avery, not on the writers. Yeah, but he's also that's a, a prophet, situation. so it's yeah. easy to like be. He's not here. You can be all oh, uh, like Admiral Cisco, or like you know him being at a right, at, no, at a I summit or yeah, yeah. somewhere. You know, it's impossible. He's gone, gone. Like you're not gonna mm -hmm. run into him. But we had like Kirk forever, literally, mm -hmm. until he got a bridge in his face, and even after that, he was still yeah, here. Yeah right like picard we're like at number two picard like we it's like literally his second body is still here <laughs> right janeway is still running around like you know in anime in animation and so on uh archer where well, archer is dead but he always gets <laughs> up about everything he does right like we keep mm -hmm. like learning about things that happen to archer like post facto don't That's forget about uh, the doctor's soon hmm. and also yeah. like Archer was around for 150 years. Like he yeah, got, exactly. he had a so good long run. A, we can like write stories, right? But like Cisco is gone. And if they, they fucking do that to Burnham, I'm going to be so fucking pissed because they keep hinting at it. I don't know. Like, I don't see it. He's searching for I a higher it. purpose. And like, what am I going to do? And what is going to be the life? And like, rewatch the episode when she talks to Burke about like searching and, and getting to know something that is higher than us. I was like, that smells of fucking bullshit. Right okay, here, right I don't. Now. I don't want to. Okay, I. I don't want to get too much into this because we're going to actually hear about this in a, in a week or two when I pull together more video of these interviews. Do you think that that's more as a producer of the show, Sonequa, maybe writing her faith into the character a little bit? Yeah, I. I don't like it. I've never I, I'm not been, saying I do like, either. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not disagreeing. The first I just thing don't know they, if it's her the first writing. Thing I texted you when I saw it was the progenitor. I was like, if that becomes some religious bullshit, I'm gonna be so yeah, fucking. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, you can be searching for a higher purpose. Like, yeah, good on you. Uh, but that doesn't mean you get to disappear in a flash of light and become a higher being or join the great call or and not have a life of accomplishment that we can tell in other stories. You know. Okay, what but I mean? what if it is the great koala? 
I don't care. I want her to like become a captain until she's like a hundred, become an admiral, and yeah, like I agree. get into adventures. And like maybe when I'm like eighty years old, I can like watch a spinoff on Discovery about like other people, and they can name drop Burnham, or she can pass in a corridor like Bones in yeah. Encounter at Four yeah. Point. <laughs> That's Fair. what I want. Yeah. Okay. And um, I like, yeah, the animals, they were cool. Like CGI is fun. I, <laughs> listen, it was a, it was a good episode, but it was not exciting at all. Yeah. Yeah. MC. Okay. So I need to respond to everything draft saying, because like you saying this, you have opened my mind to a horrific possibility because I absolutely think that you are horrifically going to be right. Right? Um, I, they're yeah. yelling at us a lot. Like, it's, I, I they are here. three episodes. Yeah. And, like, each episode she says something like this about, like, looking for a higher purpose and, like, knowing what life is and, like... And I'm like, bullshit. Yeah. I smell bullshit. Yeah. And, and and actually, in terms of them not bringing Avery back, it's so weird because Avery is the reason they put in the line about him... Coming, coming back, back. Because, I, I actually yeah. learned about that today. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Uh. They originally were going to have him go off to the prophets and just not fucking come never back. come back. Yeah. Um. And I, I honestly could see them doing that with Burnham because this is like this. And I was talking about this last week that I am very hesitant about this whole like you know, basically like God particle bullshit where it's like we're going to discover like the secret of life and they've like kind of doubled down on that in this episode where they're just like this is the power to like create life or unmake it and i know there was you know some talk like oh maybe this is going to be a red herring i feel like uh we're three episodes into what a 10 episode season I, I don't think that it's go it's going to be a red herring if they're if they're you know going this hard on it. I think because uh, I, they're I, going so hard on it, it's going to be a red herring. Can I? Not can to I mention that they say the, the word chat. red herring in the episode. Um, just they say like, oh, nobody's had dying in the the season. Yeah, like they got to reshoot a bunch of scenes when they know when they learned that they were going to be canceled. Like, so mm -hmm. she she elevating or becoming like something else or going in with the travelers or the prophets is not dying you wouldn't say that wesley crusher died you mm -hmm. know um so no she's not dying i know she's not but i still think it's bullshit if they're ascending should. and send yeah. her or something like that yeah i'm sorry if anything is going to be happening to michael is like i want her to be a badass captain on discovery but also have the red angel suit so that she can travel back in time and make guest appearances on strange new worlds <laughs> yeah, uh, and, but as for all of like the actual like me going off on just another fucking tangent about Michael, um, the, but actual stuff that happened in the episode, I liked the Dominion War reference because like I will always like a Deep Space Nine reference, and the Dominion War is clearly a m massive, massive event that took place in the Star Trek timeline like it is very much like a you know World War II situation like this was something that absolutely changed the fabric of the galaxy and I like it still echoing at you know this point a thousand years later um and as if you for... just think about sorry MC if you just think okay. about how many people fucking died during the yeah. Dominion War and how many fucking people have died since the Dominion War? And then to have something like the burn happen, like there's just always something that's happening in this universe. And so it's like, man, you think about the burn. Oh, man. And then what about the Dominion War? Yeah, I feel like it's just one of those things that will never, ever, 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 ever be forgotten. Well, I mean, like we keep on getting references to the Breen, who were members of the Dominion. Um, yeah. You know, I find that to be very, free very, that's gonna, free. come up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as for the actual, like, you know, Indiana Jones schniffs of this, um, this is another thing that my person, it, it kind of started to hit one of the um, tropes that I dislike in this. Um, and that is having this clue basically uh, exist around like this the species and it's like wow it's really lucky that in the hundreds of years since janelle's been alive that they didn't go extinct um uh and that's something that just always bugs me whenever people are on these uh, treasure hunting missions i think like the 
one that bugs me the most is in um the the Star Trek the Star Wars movie that I don't like men- mentioning, but I'll mention it now, The Rise of Skywalker, when Ray holds up the fucking medallion or whatever what and it like is. fits perfectly. And it's like, wow, landscape never changes, especially when it's in fucking water. Um Yeah, it's not like the ocean you could just eat that up at any time. Exactly. And I think it's a very similar thing when you're dealing with live animals. Like you're you're making your test them dealing with these animals that any time in the hundred years could have just like stopped existing because it's clear Janal does not. Um, well, it's part of the Jantara ritual that Janal is just Janal and does not remember anything from any of the other the other hosts. It's just like his moment in time. And even when he first comes out, he's like asking what year it is. So there's no way that he could have like actually set anything up for them. Like he's going off of hundreds of years of information from the past so but the Simeon could have but the th- but the thing is Janal does not know anything once the Jantara ritual happens Janal is just Janal no I know like, I know but not- like imagine that the symbiont the symbiont was there also and the symbiont could have set up a thing like to protect those animals and stuff like this that's true because okay yeah, I guess so yeah yeah yep yeah but it's still it's still like very thin <laughs> yeah it, 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 it just it just it hits up against like my least my biggest pet peeve in terms of these kinds of action scenes the only time it worked is goonies the only time it worked is goonies and that's because it's fucking goonies and it's amazing and perfect Agreed. i mean i also really <laughs> love the fucking cheesy x marks the spot in uh last crusade uh, last crusade like my favorite movie ever. Oh, I do that at libraries. I mean, libraries, that's different. So. That's in a building. I know, but still, like, uh, yeah, things do change. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Eric, not if it's a historical place, right? Would they? Would they really? Sure, they have protections. I yeah. know. Anyway, um, Janelle explaining about the scrubbed identity. You know who will do that? Someone that's part of Section Thirty One, like Bashir. Oh, right. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, I, I I do have to agree with um with uh MC about the 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 uh, life forms where you just like if the trial is all about them dealing with that and that life form isn't existing hundreds of years later that's <laughs> that's a big flaw although I wonder if he was like maybe if this isn't here we'll go to a different species over here because <laughs> we're just gonna keep walking like, until wait we... a second <laughs> right like wait he was second. holding was on to the piece the whole fucking time yeah he was were sure. like, let's, yeah. let's just see which one shows up first right yeah. Yeah. um yeah. uh that being said i thought that the set piece was fun it was it was neat seeing um book mm-hmm. uses powers again to communicate with things um and the whole I thought I thought you were gonna count to three. I thought that was really funny. Um, what are we talking about? I want to go off in you guys talking about um, about uh, Burnham just like going off and ascending because I can totally see it too. But more so, I can see her going off with just the discovery ship, and that's how the ship gets lost. Like later, like you know how oh, we see in it Calypso? in Calypso, yeah, and we see it in the future, and it's just like hundreds of years later, and no one's there. I could see her taking the ship and being like, everyone off. I'm going to do this heroic thing at the end. You can see it happening, right? You know, yeah, it- but also I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, the, the, the like code word. So uh, uh, YouTube doesn't flag us, but it also always go to the magical N word trope, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. with Cisco and Burnham. Yeah. Like if yeah. she also becomes a magical being that like is all knowing, like when are we stopping with that trope in Star Trek between Guinan, Cisco, and maybe Burnham? It's been a lot. So, like you know, let her be a normal person and grow I old and like agree. live her life. Like I'm done with this bullshit. Like can't I have like we didn't get Uhura like captaining the Leo the Grounds at a hundred years old? I didn't get to see that. So mm-hmm. like. Come on. The like, biggest thing that I want by the end of the season is either what you're saying, Draft, for Michael to be captain of the Discovery, like going into the sunset, like going to grow old and become an admiral, open. become like the C, C and C of Starfleet, like, like, you know, that or you go the complete opposite and she throws it all away and goes off with book he gets a new ship and they become yeah. couriers because I'd, I'd love to see that. I too. would love I'm here like, for my girl, whatever she wants. Yeah. Like 
why can't a relationship on this show just stay happy? Like we oh, already we see are, one. We are, are, I know we, we are going. I, I want. I want, I want. I want. Burnham to be happy with Book at the end of this. They have had so much happen to them. They just need to be happy at the end of this. And I just, that's all I want. I just want to Don't get happy, me started. Right? Just don't get me started. Um, yeah. Good? Oh, Wilson Cruz, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what else to say? God. Okay, so the bugs. Um, I feel like this was ex- like a repeat of the Starfleet Academy away mission with Tilly. I thought it was like mm-hmm. the yeah. same exact set piece. Yeah. And that bothered me. Like they filmed it in the it same very, place too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it just except they like they made it winter. Like you said, Eric. Like it was it was winter. Um, I just thought it was really, really boring. Um, and about except for except for Michael and Book. Like I love their chemistry always. Um, one two three go. <laughs> one two. Michael, what happened to two and one? <laughs> it's like the best delivered line. Um. I love the Dominion War reference because of everything that MC said. It's just such an important part of Trek history. Um, I was listening to the Dura Sisters finale podcast and I'm talking about it today. So it's also very fresh. Um, just a, uh, I wanted more. Like I wanted more and I wanted something a little bit different. Um, Wilson Cruz, man, like Trek gets screwed at the awards all the time. So I'm, I'm not going to get my hopes up. But man, if he shouldn't be nominated for an Emmy for this one, because he put the work into becoming Janal. And uh, that was really cool to see. So I think uh, I think the yeah, only thing that would make this like trial seem OK to me is if each of the trials later on, like build off each other. Like this is how yeah. they communicate with this, is how they deal with species and this is how to blow up and then they become gods at the end right Jeff? <laughs> strange energies strange I'd energies be down, i'd be down for that yeah that'd be fun yeah uh, <laughs> they just all gary mitchell at the end um, yeah <laughs> i love it and then can time travel and appear on strange new worlds <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm a dog with a bone <laughs> yeah you are um Listen, speaking of Wilson Cruz's performance, uh, we have part two of my interview with Sonequa Martin-Green about working with David Ajala and uh, Wilson Cruz for this episode, and uh, as well a chat with Dr. Colbert himself. We are going to play that. Here we go. Enjoy it. I want to briefly talk to you about episode three because one thing I noticed immediately is that it's three just amazing actors on the screen together leading that episode, and that's so wholesome to see, and it's so wonderfully acted by you wilson and david how fun was that oh my goodness it was so much fun you know i think wilson i i I always love when wilson and david and mary and doug and anthony and blue when when they get an opportunity to shine it's just the best thing ever and these different pairings that you see in season five are so exciting. Um, it's something that I've always been passionate about on this show is delving more into the relationships of the crew, um, including the bridge crew, right? It's like, let's, let's dig into those relationships. And I'm sure that we were going to continue to do that. <laughs> um, but I, I just loved being able to watch them. I, I love being able to witness what they did. And there's so much more to come. That's the thing. There's so much more to come with those two and with everyone. Hi, Wilson. Uh, Julian from Strange New Pod. So you got to have a lot of fun in the third episode of this season with uh, Janal. Uh, the season's doing such a good job connecting to other Star Trek. This isn't something that we saw happen uh, since Star Trek Deep Space Nine. How fun was it to get to, to embody that? Because it, it seemed like all you had was fun playing I, it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the preparation leading up to the fun was not fun. It was anxiety inducing because uh, I had a couple weeks to kind of develop this new character and I also knew how important this character would be to the rest of the season for his arc. So I had to get it right. Um, so, you know, I, I, David Ajala saw my anxiety. Uh, he let me borrow his acting coach, uh, just, just so that I could like play around and have some feedback. Um, 
and it, and I was just lucky that I got to do that with those two great actors, with David and with Sonequa, um, for much of that episode. And um, developing was great. I just wanted to get the, a, a different physicality, a different voice for him, um, just a different feel from Cobra altogether. Um, but once I figured it out, it was a lot of fun. There were, there were some great moments where you're like, I want to stretch these legs. It's been 800 years. And yeah. They mentioned the abs. Someone's definitely <laughs> looking at your Instagram. We know it. <laughs> that threw me for a loop. Yeah. Um, apparently that line got a big laugh. Uh, good to know. Um, yeah. I mean, I wanted, uh, you know, he, there, there needed to be, I felt, a, a sense of wonder and awe of being back in the physical world for this person who had not been in one and for been in the physical world for 800 years so I, I would feel I would think that you would love the feel of the air the smell of the air if you will um, the, the ability to walk on earth you know on, on the pl on, on solid ground I should say um, and just be in awe of, of, of being alive again and something that Colbert has also understood and I think for me I needed a, a, so much of that to stick with him uh, there's some element of that to to stay with him throughout the season. Nice. Back. Hello, folks. We are back. Hope you enjoyed our interview uh, with Sonequa and Wilson Cruz. Uh, it was really fun last week. Just a joy, a pleasure, an honor. Um, don't really know what else to say. It was awesome getting to do that. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we hope you enjoyed him. Let's move on to the B plot. There were like an A, B, C, and D plot of mm -hmm. uh, of this episode. Um, Rainer's not fucking around is is how I tag this one, right? Uh, Michael asks her new number one Rainer to do one on ones to get to know the disco crew, and he's like, "Nah, I read their files. I'm good." Uh, he gets assigned Tilly to help him out with this, and she's pretty blunt with him about the importance of getting to know this specific crew, right, because of how they gel together. Uh, the one-on-ones are disastrous. Thoughts on this and, and Tilly at the end of that also kind of, like, telling him how it is, Jeff. I am always baffled by the lack of curiosity of certain people. If you're Starfleet and it's been your whole life, and you've been a captain for so long, to get the opportunity to meet a crew from 900 years ago, and be, I give you only 20 words, I, it baffles me. Like, I, the lack of curiosity baffles me. Because if I get, I don't know, if I had the opportunity to meet somebody that, you know, worked the same field and I do now, but he's from 900 years ago. I'd had a bajillion of freaking questions. Like I would, I would want to know what they saw and, you know, be able to get to know them. But, you know, that's me. <laughs> but they also told, said that Renard is like, so like Starfleet to the core, but apparently yeah. he has no interest into meeting Starfleet past. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that Tilly really like, mm, you know, explain it very well like that guy is hurt i know that in the second episode we were like oh it's so grand of him to be like pretty and like okay with everything nobody would be okay like right nobody, exactly yeah nobody would be okay in this position like you can accept it and you can understand it but it's a totally different question to be okay with it and i'm glad to see that he's actually not okay with it which is totally fair yeah. like totally fucking fair his first line is like saying that his quarter is smaller than he used to because he used to have her job and then he's like it's a joke and i'm like well fuck it that was not a joke <laughs> it was a half joke it was a yeah. half joke right dude um but i like the way these guys dealing with things i think it's a character we've not seen yet it's always you know the captains are always like these manly men and they're like gonna be bad about it or they're gonna brood or they're gonna be like doing something or like trying to get it's just like very normal and human in how he deals with something that is vexating vex vexing vexing him vexing. Um, vexing. so no I, I i like the the subtlety of that character and how you see that he's, he's actually way more complex than an usual guy on the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like the 20 word thing. I think that it was 
like what people said was a good way for us to know a little bit more about them. Uh, one of the criticism I hear a lot from people who want to give themselves a good reason to not like Discovery, and it's still a shitty reason, is that we don't know the crew. In the other series, we know the crew so well. Like, what do you mean? In TOS, like, Sulu and Uhura didn't have a first name until, like, 20 years later. What are you talking? More than 20 years later. What are you talking <laughs> Uhura didn't about? didn't have a name until 2009. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm always like, yeah, that's a bad excuse, but you know... Um, so I'm always here like, to get to know the crew a little bit. I think it was a good way to introduce Rainer inside of the crew, and it was a good way also to so th- to show the complexity of that character that wants to be seen like somebody simple, direct, and you know, like kind of like the old sea captain ish, but is actually somebody who cares a lot. So I know it's gonna give a lot of depth and complexities to any plot line where he's going to be involved. Like that B plot line was for me more interesting than the A plot line in that episode. I would have watched I a whole episode of him doing yeah, this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, MC. Oh, and one more thing. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We, oh, learned, go ahead. That, we go ahead. learned that Nielsen goes to Voyager J. Yep. Yeah. And yep. gives tribbles, which was cool. I'm like, no yep. more of that. <laughs> damn wig but and now um, jane way the 18th the has to deal with the wig yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh mc okay um yeah i thought this plot was really interesting uh because and i mainly because rayner is a type of captain like we have not seen before because we've always got the idealistic captain and that's e- even even some of like the crustier captains we've had have all had that Starfleet ideal. But Rainer's and he brings it up that, you know, he's a captain that was like forged during the burn and Starfleet completely changed during that time. So it's actually this wonderful culture shock that happens with both the crew having to deal with this guy who is now in charge of them, except for Michael. Uh and with him having to deal with this crew who are from the golden age of Starfleet. Um, and, you know, they're all, you know, everybody's friends and, you know, talking to one another. And he just doesn't really have time for that. I thought the the 20 words was excellent because we did get to have these small moments with all of these crew members. And, you know, I mean, how can you not like Jet? And, uh, and I mean, also like the huge thing of Stamets, like Stamets, you know, like making a breakthrough and it's like, you know, basically Rainer's like, yeah, okay, those are your 20 words, uh, because he got bored with what, St- what Stamets was saying. Uh, and I think like, this was, you know, a really good, uh, introduction to Rainer as like a really proper character, how he's going to be interacting with people throughout this season, how he's going to have to, you know, the start of his character arc, because I don't even think like the last two, those were like the prelude. Now we're actually getting into the proper character arc. But I really think that this was such a good showcase for Tilly, a character who I think we're going to be not saying goodbye to at the end of this season. I think um, since we now know that Starfleet Academy is going to be set in uh, this century, I don't think Mary Wiseman's going anywhere. I think she's still going to stay around. So we've kind of got to develop her as this wise kind of mentor character, even though this is somebody who has been on a starship for many decades more than she has, but she's still going to call him out on his bullshit because that's who Tilly is. And I fucking love her and her telling him off. And not being able to say the last word because she runs out of the 20 beautiful. words. Just chef's kiss. Very yeah. well written, that whole B plot. Very, All very of it. Well yeah. 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 Eric? I really like um, Shaw version 2.0. Um, We're going to ask that question in a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, he, he is giving me a lot of Shaw vibes right now. And he's yeah. he's sort of like... Um, he feels like... It feels like he's keeping himself away from this crew purely because this isn't his crew and he doesn't know how long he's going to be here. I feel like he needs to know he's that business person who's like, he needs to know what he needs to know and he doesn't need anything extra, but we get the heart of the show 
um, Tilly here, who's like, you know what? This crew is more than that. And if you earn their trust and if you earn their friendship, they'll do anything for you. And that's really what this crew is. Like they are a diehard family, which I, I've always loved about this show. Um, the 20 words is, was brilliant. I thought that was so funny. I thought that was great. I love that. It is. It's true. Like if you ask someone to say 20 words or, or less about themselves, they'll try and pick something that maybe will make them memorable. I don't know. I thought it was a really smart way for him to know the deepest part of, or not the deepest part, but like something unique about each person. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, I mean, like you, you look at that when it first happens, right? And you're like, oh, he's just being a dick. But like, there's definitely a purpose to him doing it that way, which I found really interesting. Especially um, if they're not being prepped for it. They're right. just like, no, 20, 20 words about yourself yeah. now. And he's not being a dick. Like, he's not being the same Dan Michael. And that's also fine. He didn't insult anybody that I mm -hmm. think so. He didn't throw anybody out except like when they were done and they told he told them exactly what he's ex he was expecting. He said, is it mission relevant? He's also on like, there's something going on that he's keeping an eye on. He's also, I think, not really accustomed to Zora. I think that's that's a mm -hmm. big, that's mm -hmm. an important point. Yeah, but he like I don't agree with the Shaw thing. Shaw is prejudiced. Rainer is not. He's right. not prejudiced mm -hmm. that's fair. That's at fair. all to any member of the crew. He's also Shaw is dealing with a lot of like undressed trauma, and I don't feel Rainer is the same. He's just a different way of leadership and i just went mm. through a change of leadership <laughs> <laughs> myself and you know what i went from a guy who knew everything about us i would bring you soup when you were like <laughs> sick and like was also you know um all over matter of uh problematic or like awesome like everybody and everybody every leader is has a different kind of way to gel with gel or not because it's lonely at the top and and i think that he's just a different kind of leader and the fact that tilly is pushing him to be the same kind of leader then michael is also going against michael because michael wants him there because he's not like them and she needs mm -hmm. that and i think that like this question of like respect respect and so on that like it was disrespectful to the, i don't think he was disrespectful he was just not like american leadership where they're like <laughs> i think the only person i think the thing that was holding tilly up the most was how how he treated stamets who actually i think had like something pretty major to contribute and i think because of their relationship that very much rubbed her the wrong way but i mean i don't disagree with you no. um in in the chat uh it's moving so fast tonight i had it and i don't anymore uh p lewis did ask a question is there a similarity between rainer and shaw and maybe and maybe, maybe I think, not though i think the only real similarity about them is that they're both standoffish at first right mm -hmm. they're both like that at the beginning of the series we don't know how um rainer is going to get as the show goes on i i'm sure we're all sure he's going to get along with the crew and open up but you know we didn't think that was going to happen with shaw and he sort of did especially when jordy yeah. showed up yeah and, you know, Paul Paul Nash in the chat really put it, I think, perfectly. Like, Rainer is a war-burned captain. Basically, what people wanted Lorca to be sans the mirror universe, right? Like, he's lived... He, he lived through the burn. Like, who, who knows, like, how many red directives he had to deal with? Because we know and he's done you. Did yeah, he say? Sorry, yeah. he did. Sorry, thank yeah. you. We do know how many he had to deal with. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, with, like, you know, dealing with the Emerald Chain. Dealing with probably, like, you know, people trying to steal dilithium. Like, the dude has been through some shit, but he doesn't have PTSD like Shaw does, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's it's a very different Or there is better healthcare in the 32nd yeah, century. Yeah, there's that, too. Probably not, though. Um, <laughs> I love this B plot. I think it's the best part of the episode. Uh, it's I. I mean, listen. I'm I'm just madly in love with Calum Keith Renee. I think he's just one of the most underrated actors in this genre. Uh, the dude just slays at everything he does. Uh, uh, how do you know he doesn't have PT? I I, I don't know. I'm guessing. Um, no, but like uh, but it, it I, no, doesn't. I, I okay, okay. Like, he doesn't like give Shaw, off Shaw vibes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Shaw takes it on like the people around him. You see, he has issues. Like he is mean, he's biased, he's also prejudiced, mm -hmm. and that all comes from a place of trauma. Uh, Rainer is not. That's his way to yeah. be a leader, and okay, that's why he's here because he's not Michael. 
fair. Uh, P. Lewis says, I heard someone describe Rainer as patriarchal leadership and Burnham as matriarchal leadership. That might have been on our show so last week with Sadiqa Martin yeah. Green said that <laughs> during our interview, um, which, you know, is very accurate. I loved it. I think this was actually the highlight of the episode and the best part of it. Um, let's talk about the end of it where where um, we do see he's taking some time to analyze the crew, right? And actually has some great insight into them, which I actually found impressive. I don't think Tilly was impressed as I was, but I was impressed. Um, but she does remind him it takes more than that and they need to to feel seen, which I also res- like understand to a point. Mm-hmm. And that respect is earned both ways. I think that goes back to how he dealt with Stamets. Thoughts on this final moment between the two? Because I feel like something does click with inside him, Draft. I think, you know, a good leader is somebody that brings the best out of people. Yeah. And he's not here to do the work. He's here to bring the best out of people. And we've seen him do it with Adira and Tilly in episode two. He didn't have the answer, but he knew how to guide them to get the answer. So we know he can, and right now he is super stressed about what's going on. Fair enough. I think he's like the only one taking that thing like really seriously. Also, I feel everybody's kind of having fun with like that treasure hunt when he's like, "This is not good," <laughs> and um, and there is this whole thing where like he needs to know all the crew, which fair. It feels like you know professional development day which I don't like doing also. And it's a cultural thing in the U S the way that your leader has to be your friend. I hate it personally. Like my, my boss is not my friend. I can respect them. They can respect me, but there's a difference with like being friends. And I feel that in that, like today I was like, I'd rather be working under Reynard than working under Michael. Mm. If it's just my job, you know what I mean? Like, my boss is my boss. Tell me what to do. See what I do. Like, that's, we're good. <laughs> so I like these cultural differences. My problem is that I feel they're trying to change him. And I don't like this. Don't change people. Like, like, you know. Yeah, fair. Have leeways, but I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I want to see more. Uh, again, it was the most interesting thing at the whole thing. Oh, and the bar is no, is named Reds. Yeah. Which we, do, like we don't get more explanations than that. I was uh, really probably interested Red, by Red the Angel, whole bar. Red Angel, Red Directive, Red, Red Matter. Who the fuck knows? I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> like I was more interested by what was going on in that bar than like the whole conversation. And the Sluggo Cola, <laughs> by the way. Cola, yeah. It's still so, around in the thirty second century. DS9 Go in for it. Yeah. It's in honor of all the red shirts that have died. The reds. Oh God. <laughs> Oh boy! Nope. Uh, are, are we going to talk about the Frankie in the room? Has been bartender since that bar was built, so doing something right. Uh, they build a bar around him. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think the thing that um, that Tilly was trying to get at about um, the respect going both ways is that having these one on ones with the crew and having them basically only say 20 words and then dismissing them is that the crew doesn't get to know anything about Rainer except for the fact that he doesn't see he and I mean I know he read their um he read their files and you know the 20 words does help him get to know them but from the crew's point of view he doesn't seem to give a shit and the thing is if you're a commander and you're going to be sending these people into you know death defying situations and we know that you know the especially since michael is often off the ship uh going on all of these away missions the commander's going to be on the ship a lot giving all of the orders yeah he doesn't have to be their friend but the crew have to feel a level of comfort uh that um that the commander's actually going to listen to them which i don't think that that would have that came off during these interviews uh and i think the and if he, I'm not saying what the way Rainer does it is wrong. It's very pragmatic, and it is something that would have been cultivated during the burn time. Uh, but that's not the time that they're in anymore. That's not the type of ship that this is. And I think it's a dynamic that 
what Tilly's just trying to warn him that it's going to lead to more friction. Like he does not need to, you know, become this hippy dippy touchy feely person who is going to give everybody hugs, but he does need to actually listen to, especially but he when you're like choose, Stamets. He didn't choose to do these interviews. And I think for me, it's the key. Like, he didn't choose that. Michael made him do that. Maybe that guy, like, I think any day, captain but, but would have had any first day. officer do that, though. I think yeah, that that's the procedure. It is very much. And also the fact Michael's the goddamn captain. If she gives the order, he's she should do it. Like, he did it. He just didn't like doing it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, well, I mean, also, I'm just saying that Tilly calling him out on it. I can completely understand why she did call him out on it because obviously she was assigned to him for a reason because, you know, Michael thought something like this could have happened. So, yeah. Nice. Eric, the whole thing, I like this whole sequence at the end. Um, I think, I hope Rainer uses his 20 words as stepping stones to get to know people. I, I do agree with Giraffe. I don't want them to totally change him but if he does warm up to these people like that would be nice um and like mc said these people are going to be putting their lives on the line for for him especially when michael's off gallivanting and doing her uh, adventuring stuff um so ascending to the higher place <laughs> i didn't want to say it uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah they, they need to trust him they need to know him um and there's was it all good things at the end of TNG when Picard goes back in time to when he's just meeting the crew and he's like, you don't know this yet, but you're the finest crew and you have to trust me. Like that's he needs that trust. He needs that that crew to do whatever he says and not, you know, and they have before not done something because <laughs> they don't trust the person in charge. So they can't do that with the like I, they, I think that I know exactly what you're trying to say. And I think that Rainer does need to be aware of the Lorca in the room. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like for sure. That's, I think like the most important. Yeah, part. exactly. Yeah. Mm, and, absolutely. and I think, I think he might, he will start opening up, but I don't think he's going to fully change. I hope he doesn't fully change because I like prickly Rainer. He's awesome. Yep. I love him. Yeah. I did like the end though. Right. Like I, I absolutely love, and and like I said, I don't think Tilly took it the best way. I took it the best way when he, uh, Kang said it, and it's actually a great point. It's also really sad. Rainer's description of Reese is more character development for him than we've had and we've seen in four seasons. Which holy shit! I mm -hmm. mean, absolutely, on. yeah. But like, man, it's it's awesome that immediately he's got he's got like re a really good like eye on people, right? He's got like a really good um, what what am I trying to say? He's he's got a really good read on people, right? And I think that Tilly still just feels a little no pun intended, burned by, like, the whole Stamus thing, and, you know... <laughs> Press <laughs> that button! Press it! Uh, oh, fine. Get off my bridge. There you go. There you know what go. you did. <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I like at the end when she goes, respect goes both ways, and that they need to feel seen. He sits there, he looks at his bourbon or his whiskey or whatever delicious thing he's drinking, and goes... Huh, because he sees he sees what they're doing in the bar and that they have that. And I think that while I don't think he's ever going to be that person, he can come to both command and get back respect of this crew. And I, I think we are going to see that. I love this B plot so, so much. So shall we move on? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. Because mm -hmm. logic, logic will tear us apart again. Yeah, I'm singing. I'm singing. I'm sorry. I had to. Eric, Eric liked I it. I like that song. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite songs in the world. Um, not even married yet, right? Yet Saru and Tarina are being bothered by logic extremists. They're just trying to do their jobs. Thoughts on the C plot here of like politics and marriages and just also their overall cuteness together giraffe again i i don't i'm sorry but i don't care so much about the relationships in this show like i i don't watch star trek for like you know relationship stuff in the show i read about those but <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say how did we meet i i read about those but like if the show is like 
not really clear about it, I'd be fine, you know? I, I just, I don't like romance, like, love story, movie stuff. So, um, they're cute. Uh, Tarina is a badass. I love how she handles everything and how she's unfazed and at the same time really fucking stern. I'm like, get that aid into his fucking place, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember his name, but I saw him with like stupid haircut. I was like, that guy is here for the drama and he's going to be a problem. <laughs> ten, ten. We're, I mean, can we salute the fact that we have a classic Vulcan character back in the show? Mm -hmm. Because I miss the, these motherfuckers. Like, everybody's too nice and, and you know, romantic. Like, I want somebody to be a problem. I like him. So, um, I, I like the fact that Trina knows what she's doing. I like that she's not helpless. I like the fact that she's not being swayed. I like the fact that she's like, Fuck them and fuck their horse and fuck like whatever. Like, I don't care. And this is what I'm going to do. And if I'm doing things it's because I thought about it and I know what I'm doing. I like characters like that. Yeah, I hope she's agreed. not going to ascend. <laughs> ah, uh, Eric the Red wrote, Tarina is Vulcan as a motherfucker. Vulcan I don't agree on this, actually. I don't think she, she is. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, no, she's Vulcan as a monster fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, Tarina's got some snark and some sass, and I love her for it. Yeah, yeah, and she's like very in tune with, you know, everything that's going on around her. I, and I know that's what she's supposed to yeah. be as president mm -hmm. of Navarre, well, right? But the thing is, like, very often, you know, the first thing we know about the Vulcans is how smart they are. And I feel Tarina has been like holding his cards very close to her chest. You know, we know by default that she must be brilliant because she is who she is but so far we've not seen her like use all our tools yet and i feel that today in this episode that was a good introduction of what she's able to do i would love for her to be in the action you know a mm -hmm. little bit more and that her whole plot is not just saru so, yeah 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 let's see sure. mc um I adored this plot. I mean, I said last week how much I absolutely adore this couple. And so much of this episode bothered me that this was like my nice little bright spot where it's just like, oh, my my Saru and Tarina. Um, and <laughs> I thought that it was actually surprisingly complex considering how easy it was because i mean you mentioned them being logic extremists they're not they they're don't not, refer know, to them as I logic know, extremists i know, I know they they're don't they're vulcan purists so this is like the next level it's of a race logic thing. extremists it is it's a, a race, race thing. thing it is it's a race, it is a race, thing. Yeah. It's a race yeah. thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's people who yeah, are anti-romulans basically yeah there's people That's who are anti-romulans and uh, you have this aide who is obviously one of them uh, telling Tarina. Oh, I don't know about I that. I think he was. He oh, I think he absolutely yeah, was. I agree on that. I don't know. He was making yeah. Earth idioms. I don't know. He's literally talking I'm, about like powder cakes. Well, I mean, here, here's the thing. Giraffe was right, pointing out that this is the first like Vulcan classique that. that we've seen in a long time. Yeah. Who better to be a Vulcan classique than a Vulcan purist? Hmm. This is like, I mean, yeah. Um, and but telling Serena not to make her announcement to a very obvious alien, like, yeah, oh, like, he's I mean, yeah, 1000% well, like, one of them, yeah. It's like we're, we're, we're putting, you know, it's like, oh, it's because of, you know, what Saru said, you know, and it's like, no, it's because he's a fucking Kelpian, uh, and you know, Saru, you know is you know trying to like do like the noble thing and like uh uh you know oh you know we'll we'll put off the announcement because i don't want to mess up your career but tarina absolutely has had this conversation with her aide like several times before about the fact that she can't marry a fucking kelpian because it's going to ruin her uh her career and honestly i feel like tarina didn't want to tell Saru all about that. Um, this is, I mean, I, yes, a lot of this is me headcanning and, you know, uh, interpreting the situation, but this is absolutely how I read it, that uh, Trina is like, 
these people are fucking racist and don't want this, you know, interspecies marriage and fuck them. We're going to do it anyways. And she called him, what was it? Dashing and erudite? No, yes, handsome dashing. and erudite. Yeah, handsome and, yeah, that's right. Handsome yeah. and erudite. Okay. And it was something like that. And it just... I love that that comes from a Vulcan, um, particularly, I mean, the area date part, like, like that's very Vulcan, but calling him dashing as well. Uh, and do you know what? Saru is, is handsome and area date. So, you know, we're here for it. Saru is I, a I, handsome I, fellow. Do, do, I think he's a Vulcan purist also, and she knows mm -hmm. about it. And that's why he's her yeah. aide. It's uh, which placate them. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That one of her aides is... A Vulcan purist. Yeah, fair. It's the same thing yeah. with Sarek and his aide would try to murder him. Literally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh Eric. Yeah, I never I never thought that uh, the aide would have been a Vulcan purist. I assumed that because she would have vetted all of that, that it wouldn't be. But it makes sense that she would keep her enemies close. She is that smart, and you can see that this whole episode. Um I I I love their relationship, like MC said. They they it's just so it's so cute seeing Saru like like worry over her, but maybe just a little bit too much. Um, but it's still adorable. Um, the I I loved I loved how sure she was of everything that she was doing. Like there was not a not a hint of her not knowing what was going on. She was so firm in her beliefs that she knew that what she had to do at certain points. Um, she didn't really have to tell Saru that, but he, 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 like, he wanted to help, and that's adorable. Saru, being adorableness, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes, and I hope this storyline isn't just all for the wedding later on, which I assume yeah. is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be some action. I some yeah. kidnapping yeah, action Saru. Some, some, some we need um, we need to see action Saru back on the yeah. ship. Like it has to happen. Like if the if the fucking um, treasure hunt ends on Earth, I'm going to be so angry. Oh God! Sin. Don't just oh, stop. don't put that out in the world. But maybe it ends up on Romulus and Romulus blew up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually be here for that a thousand <laughs> fucking percent. It would so make sense. sense. It's so it so make red sense. herring. And then, like, Surprise. there's a piece missing, and they have to go in the Kelvin. Oh, no, Kelvin up there. Oh my god! <laughs> That's where she ascends to the Kelvin verse. I want to know what the hell is going on. Mm, I mean, it actually works. Um, damn. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this. It was fine. Uh, I love them. They're adorable. They're cute. Uh, that guy's. Talking about powder kegs threw me off. Um, <laughs> I hope he comes back. I hope uh, yeah, he's kind of an interesting character. I, and I, I like how he explained, and the powder keg, powder keg is her is career. The, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, got that. It's like, we got it, buddy. Um, the one thing I like that doesn't have much to do with Serena is I actually really liked seeing Saru in his role as ambassador and just coming up mm -hmm. with like a really simple solution to what is a big problem. Like, not having a star base is a big problem because it's a big thing that you don't have and it's just like yeah buddy we got you we have starships again we're building them they're coming out now because we have dilithium again we'll send extra patrols your way we got you like don't worry and everybody but two assholes approves of it so like you know it, like it worked out saru did action saru in the boardroom i liked it i like an awesome makeup by the way there's a oh, oh my god so yeah Salai. there's Salai, some, Salai, yeah. yeah it looks so fucking cool really cool makeup Ugh. and everything and i want to add that the the fashion of Torina is always super interesting always, look yeah. at what she's oh, wearing yeah. and there's always element of vulcan fashion and romulan fashion mm. everything mm -hmm. she wears it's or the fabric or the shoulder pads or something about like the shape of the the shoulders always though the aid is wearing typical vulcan fashion mm -hmm. Another thing I want to point out. Eventually, I'm, I'm going to do a Tarina costume. I'm it's convinced like she's she yeah. is Romulan Vulcan because that's why. Oh, I am, oh, yeah. I am too. Yeah. I am yeah. very much am. Yep. Um, Tara says Borath that could open up the possibility for Lauren Ash. That was actually one of my theories for from last week. I talked about how I think there that are, we could see Borath um, in this season. There are no rings of Romulus. The thing blew up. No, the thing literally <laughs> fucking is gone. Yeah. There is nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing there. It's gone. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to start this one because I'm going to read the question and I'm just going to start going off. So then I just don't have to do it later. Why the fuck is everybody breaking up? And especially why the fuck are we breaking up our queer couples in 2024? Like, seriously, I'm like legitimately mad and my blood pressure is probably skyrocketing. This is so dumb. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It was unnecessary. It was stupid. I, I get that you don't want to pay an I, I don't think you don't want to pay an actor, but I think like there's a budget and Ian Alexander, you know, like does other projects. But like just because you're not going to see the actor anymore doesn't mean you need to break them up. They were fine. There was nothing wrong with them. Like why? Zero reason. Long distance sucks. Yeah, but like come on, we've all, we've all done long distance, and a lot of people make that shit work. I am so done. Like in 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 two episodes. We've had, and whether you want to agree with me or not, Book and, and Michael break up for literally no reason, especially after their, their reunion at the end of season four and him going away. It's still mind boggling me. And then, oh my God, yeah, Jim McMahon, Gray literally survived death for Adira. No need for them to break up. Like, literally, they, they've transcended space and time. Pardon my Doctor Who reference, but like, legitimately, holy crap. Stop breaking up your queer, queer characters, especially in Discovery. Like, we've been through this in season one already with not that they broke up, but literally, like, kill on your gaze. Let's not do this shit. It is infuriating. It is dumb. And there was no fucking reason for it. My rant is over, Giraffe. What do you think about this? I don't really care. <laughs> Again, there are too many love stories in that fucking show. Like, I cannot keep up. Like, I, I, Gray has been gone for so long. Or they bring them back, like and right. like the story exists, and they can actually develop plots. They can develop plots around a long distance relationship. So, but you I just have a throwaway took, line about it. I think. Well, they did that for Seven and Raffi, and that was ridiculous. Like the throwaway line, like I, you know, just like, oh, we're not together anymore. Okay. Um, but well, I don't least, mean throw, having a throwaway line about them breaking up. I mean, just have a throwaway line about them like going on a vacation together or something. Like we've seen them together a bunch. Like there's no reason. I don't know. I think that I don't know. I personally, when they started the episode and Reno, by the way, Jet Reno had nothing good to do. Like give give her something to do that is badass and not just like talking about people relationship. I mean, her lines are fantastic. She's a fantastic actress and I love seeing her, but can she do something <laughs> like be part of the plot, please? Every episode. Um, but I feel like it. it's, they started something and then they abandoned it. Like the, you know, the show. And then they were like, Oh yeah. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, let's get rid of it because like that, like it not being a thing that people are going to ask about. So it's clumsy. It's not really necessary. Um, it's not really interesting. Like, what does it bring to the character? Like, how is that going to do anything to Adira? Like, how is that developing the character of, of Adira to, you know, have that break up in that planet in the middle of the things i i don't get i don't get the 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 need of the breakup for the narration book and michael at least like i was like oh my god what are you doing you know what i mean i was like so shocked i was like I, I love Buck and he's still around. So, you know, that creates tension for the character. And, you know, they're going to like, are ah, they going to get back together? Are these going to be things, you know, there's going to think they're going to die and they're going to be like, oh my God, maybe, you know, I know that it's going to have repercussion. Adira and Gray, I'm like, what what is that breakup going to do? Nothing. Nothing. And it's just continuing a really fucking horrible TV trope, like period, end of story. Of, well, people do break up also. No, 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 like, but, uh, but, but like, that your queers can't be happy. Your queer characters queer can't be happy. It's a queer couple that queer couple no, never but, break up. You no, know? of course, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but especially on TV, like, that's all that seems to happen. They're also kids. Like, I they're think kids. that's a cop out. Yeah, but, the, but like, that, that comment no, about I mean, literally. I broke up when I was a kid. Like, I get what? it. You break up a lot. Like, it's difficult. And the, your first person is not your person, it should not be. 
And I think it's something that, like, you know, TV has, like, taught us a lot that your first love, I think it's in, in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, somebody has watched that show? T -t -t Titus says that to somebody that, um, you know, when, when, when you create it's so difficult to, like, find your person, and then when you find the, the, your first person, you think that's going to be your only person, and it's not. And I, I don't remember exactly the, the storyline, but I really like that episode because it's true. Like your first love is always, you always think it's going to be the one and it's going to be like forever. And it, and it, I mean, maybe some people do, but most of us do not, right? And the thing is that there was not even that dimension in that breakup. There was no dimension at all. They just sat down and they were like, oh, I think I cannot do long distance anymore. And I was like, right. What do I care about this? What is this? You know, if there was actually like some tension, some, I don't know, like something going on with the character that would change the character and grow the character and like, I don't, but not even. So yeah, I, I just, again, that episode is just, they're just throwing, I think they're just tying up loose ends. I would not be surprised if that was one of the scenes they were shot. Mm, and they added to like and you know yeah like make yeah, good yeah, bows yeah. on everything because this is not going they never wrote it to go anywhere they yeah. half asked that relationship in the writing and then they were yeah, like fair. we don't yeah. know what to do with this yeah yep all right mc's ready to go for better or for worse what the actual fuck okay i am just i am oh my god um I am so fucking mad at you. Star Trek, Paramount, just everybody fucking involved with this. Anybody who has gone to my YouTube channel and has seen most of my Star Trek videos, a lot of them are about the queer representation in Star Trek, particularly how Star Trek fumbles the ball on it. And this is yet another fucking example of it. And Discovery, I was not expecting it from you. Like I, That's the big I, thing, right? Yeah. I thought better of Discovery. But... The, you know, they've been showing like this, you know, pride picture that I think is like uh, for like a cover of a comic book where they have all of their queer characters and all, all of them, only two of them, only two of the couples are actually still together. And one of them is stuck in the Kelvin verse and, you know, uh, it will probably never be heard from again. The only ones that are actually still together are Culver and Stamets, and they sure as fuck tried to have that couple not be together it was only because the fans rioted that you know uh, culber was even brought back and there this idea that you know the long distance you know oh the long distance relationship that you know it um you know this is what broke them up first of all they didn't have to have it be a long distance relationship like the like i mean i know like we you know want to talk about realism in relationships but the, this is you know a spaceship that runs on mushrooms like <laughs> realism has no fucking place here and and the as part of this long distance relationship one of the people has gone to stir pools with belly worms in them uh so like there's just no place for realism in this uh and also it's just it, he's a flesh golem too like like there's just like uh yeah first loves often don't work out but these aren't real people these are uh these are fictional characters and their relationship can go whatever way the writers want it to go and the way the writers wanted it to go is that they had no fucking clue what to do with gray the second he was out of adira well um, that's very and, very very true and yeah. it's so it's so fucking insulting because they made such a huge deal out of bringing both Ajira and Gray onto the show, and they never knew uh, what to do with Gray. Uh, it was this character who was just like, you know, like this memory, and people were very critical back then of them again hitting the bury your queers trope. And so then they're like, oh, well, I guess we're going to bring him back. And then it's like, oh, well, what the fuck are we supposed to do with him now that we're back? We're going to send him to go stir the, the trill pools. And we ha there's no reason that they need to break up because I 
you know, Giraffe, you're talking about your first love doesn't have to be your only love. The thing is, this is the end of the show. They're not going to get to meet anybody else. Right. Uh, may I see, I I mean, I don't know, but I would see Adira going to the Academy show. That's, but the thing is, the people who are writing Discovery probably, you know, other than uh, working Tilly into it, I don't know if they're really writing to a show uh, a, a later on show. Um, and I mean, like, that was my problem when they broke up fucking Raffi and Seven because, you know, um, they wanted to uh, they wanted to build up the um, the legacy show where it's like they can't be, you know, captain and first officer and uh, while in a relationship. And it's like, well, first of all, that's bullshit. But also, how were Seven and Raffi supposed to know that? Because considering they're fictional characters in your universe and they would not give a shit, um, but they wrote it in because they wanted to set up shit for the future and not care about the fact that these characters are representation for people. And Star Trek has repeatedly told us that queer characters cannot be in a happy relationship because if you look at all of the queer characters, none of them have happy, healthy relationships. Jet Reno has been on Star Trek Discovery for how many years now? Four, I'm five, seriously six, asking. Seven. Four or five. Uh, Th- like three, one. Th- it's like, two, sorry. like three years in universe, I believe, mm-hmm. which I get she lost her wife, but three years is some time that, you know, you could maybe start to have a flirtation with somebody. And then that would be a story that you could actually do with Jet, you know, other than her snarking, you know, in the backgrounds. And I mean, I know that they have problems getting Tignataro because Tignataro is very popular. Also during COVID, there was an issue because of her health. But, you know, maybe develop a storyline where Jet is developing feelings for somebody on Discovery and is maybe feeling guilty about it because of her wife. Detmer and then you're starting to <laughs> And I mean, yes, develop that Detmer and Oshakun are finally in a fucking relationship because they so clearly are. And um, they were I mean, both then, gone from this episode. So they I mean, were all that doing is true. something together. And I mean, I've complained before about the fact that our only fucking rep for, you know, regular, I'm going to preface regular queer representation on Strange New Worlds is Nurse Chapel. And that is from one throwaway line that I know. And I know for a fact, a lot of people missed it because I have comments on my video where it's like, was that what she said? So it's as far as I'm concerned, it's not representation because I mean, I know that, you know, bisexuals can be in, you know, unfulfilling uh, relationships with men. Um, But that's all we know for her future is these unfulfilling relationships with fucking men. So you're giving me this throwaway line about her being representation so that you can point to her and it's like, look, we have a queer. But it's like there are other characters that you could have put that on. So just this insistence on Star Trek where it's like we have the representation but not wanting to actually do anything with it where it's just like yeah sure this is you know star trek is always i know you're not like a huge fan of the relationships in star trek but star trek has always had relationships like since the very beginning <clears throat> star trek has you know you know put aside what would be a typical structure in the military and they've developed these interpersonal relationships and especially when you get into the stuff in the 90s onward where you had like romantic relationships forming you had these very very solid relationships forming and it took them much much too long to bring a queer character in it. And I know a lot of that goes on to Rick Berman because he was just like insistent on not introducing queer characters because Gene Roddenberry said that he wanted queer characters in like 1987 and still it did not happen until uh, 2016. And since 2016 onward, we have had queer characters, but at this point, most of them are concentrated on a, on a show that is going to be leaving Uh, at the end of, you know, in a couple of months. And we've had one of those major couples break up. And it is just so infuriating that queer characters are not able to be in a functioning relationship. I struggle so much to see myself represented in Star Trek or in any media. I mean, part of that is because I've got 
like a very specific queer background, but I feel a kinship with anybody under the LGBTQ plus IA umbrella. And so seeing anybody is a victory. And I want to see these characters not just being there. I want to see them thriving and being happy and being able to find others to thrive and be happy with. Wow. That was great. I'm a little dizzy now. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. Damn. Um, Eric. Thank, thank you for putting me after MC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there's nothing really that I can add to this um, other than it's sort of insulting to Gray and Adira as characters to just have this happen. And if this is the end of their story, like that's just sad. Like, like MC said, they had such a big deal bringing Gray and Adira on that ship and having them, they put them everywhere in the promos for, just, what was it, season three? Season four, three. three. Season three. Right? Yep. Last yeah, season, it's and then last season, we're like, okay, I guess Gray's not gonna show up as much. That's cool. It happens, but to just have it as a, it does. It feels like a pickup. This feels like a pickup that they did at the end of the season. We're just like, well, we didn't get to have Gray in the season that much. We might as well have them break up. Like that shit. That mm -hmm. sucks. That super sucks. It's and just, it's only episode three. And it's only episode three. <laughs> If this doesn't lead to anywhere for the rest of the season, like, like if Adira doesn't go anywhere from this, like, what what's the point yeah. of even doing this? What's the yeah. point? Yeah, it's just sad and a little bit infuriating, as I think we've we've all said at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really know what else to say about it. Um, I ranted already at the beginning. It's just like a trope that needs to go away. Uh, not to call out Michelle Paradise because I think Michelle Paradise is amazing, but like as mm -hmm. a queer showrunner as well, to like have that happen sucks. So, just saying. Um, I mean, and now I will say this: now that I am calm, sometimes this kind of stuff happens because people think you know it's like, oh, we need to treat these characters like we treat everybody else, right? Right. Which is which is which is a fair point, but in my point in argument to that is that. We have so few of them. It's Discovery like, hasn't earned, Star Trek hasn't earned the right to do that yet. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, final thoughts on this episode. We'll go in reverse order. Eric. Um, it was all right. I like the, I like the Saru and Tarina stuff. I thought that was very cute. The, the treasure hunt thing. I don't know. It was all right, but seeing um, seeing Culver act his pants off was amazing. Yep. MC. Well, I think I've made my feelings very clear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll I'll just say uh, that uh, Culver was really great. Like Wilson Cruz just did just like such a fantastic performance. And even though I wasn't too crazy about the actual like Shantara ritual, getting to see him act his pants off um, was great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about the end with. Yeah, um, I, was, I was gonna Maul say. Put... I can I address the the actual only part of the plot. Of yeah, this go ahead. Episode? <laughs> yeah. So, like, first of all, Trill security is absolute Fucking crap awful. and bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like that dude was faced by Michael in like season three. <laughs> like they already got like heist by Michael in season three, and then they're like, no, we have like tight security, no problem in their most sacred place. <laughs> or two people were not supposed to be here, but they're just wearing red, so it's okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. I do like the fact that they have decided to not bother and just follow them, which I think is super smart. Mm -hmm. It's um, a smart, I love a smart villain. I mean, we don't even know if they're They're, really they're going to cloak their ship know. and put it on the back like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Millennium Falcon <laughs> style. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> but like for real, it's very yeah. smart. Like why would you try to outbeat the Federation? Like just let them do the dirty word and get shot at and when they're near the end, just swoop in and get the thing. Like yeah. it's very, very smart. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, again, there's only 10 episodes and we spend one episode doing Mostly nothing. Mostly I mean, nothing. I love the plot mm -hmm. with 
no-brainer. I think that was great B plot. They get one more clue. I think they're five clue total because like the thing looks like they have five parts. Mm-hmm. Um, the second clue is just like dead ass a list of coordinates. So if somebody finds the thing by error, it just follows the coordinate and gets to the next clue. And I'm just like, this is not very safe. <laughs> this is not very, yeah. this is not very smart. Like we, sp- we, we go from like a poem in a planet that shoots at you with like a secret stanza and then like the drill spot on your face, on the face, like to find the right thing, the right person with like a clue before that to here's a state of coordinate. He was running out of time. It was, it was like he had to do it in like one night. <laughs> that took a long time. Let's go, uh, let's go fast to the next episode. So there's three more clues to find and there is seven episodes left. Um, so let's go. Yeah. I'm like, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was not a bad episode. It was. was yeah. Okay. The choices were made that we don't agree with. Uh, it was low key, like soft and boring. Um, not boring, but you know what I mean, like easy. And Wilson Cruz was amazing. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt Harker is, and I think that Zora can't track the tracker next episode is idiotic. Don't ever judge an episode before you see it, man, because mm-hmm. oh boy, are you in for a <laughs> ride next week? Uh, <laughs> gonna, be, gonna be gonna be eating somewhere. I I next week's episode is one of my favorite episodes in recent TV history. So um, he's not wrong. Not he's not wrong. Yet. Not wrong. No, I haven't either. Uh, don't judge. Don't don't do that. I'm calling you out, sir. Uh, <laughs> this episode was fine. That like that's the best way to put it. Like fine with a lowercase f. Uh, the Wilson Cruz was amazing. Stole the show. Cal and Keith Renee stole the show as well. That dude could do no wrong. Fine. Among the, aggressively, the, aggressively, uh, aggressively fine. Aggressively fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I I love Callum. I love Wilson. Uh, both got to really like show off in this episode. It was great. Um, yeah. Like yep. Like that's new, Julian. No, I love calling you out, man. It's my goal in life. Uh, <laughs> it is, <laughs> and you love it. Let's get to the subspace to pull and mailbag. What's in Christopher? Open a channel. Channel's open. Who wants to take the poll? Anybody? I'll, I'll do it. I guess. It. Oh, no, go, oh. go, go, giraffe. Go for it. Oh, oh. Yeah, I've not read it in like forever. <laughs> I think go. I read it last week, <laughs> and I have the oh, other. Yeah. yeah. Subspace Tipple. Um, so we asked Trek Twitter what they thought about Ginal, and this is what they had to say. 32.9% said, here for it, Ginal. <laughs> Ginal. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, 32.7% said, drilled with it. 12.2% said, rain it in. 12.2% said, Feeling gray. Please rain it in. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, get, I did not really like so good. good. Really good. I'm just I, teasing. I thought yeah. those were really good this week. It was good. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. So 42 person is, is one of the highest yeah. number we had. Um, it is, but I also feel like the 12.2 for the bottom is saying something like it wasn't mm-hmm. like wildly loved, you know? Um, I probably would have voted for trilled with it or rain it in yeah like, same. you know i w- yeah. i would have gone feeling gray because <laughs> yeah the fair. stuff it, yeah 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 that's fair um eric can you oh no wait, mc sorry mc can you take matt harker's please matt harker wrote just finished 503 and i thought it was a decent bridge episode the 20 words or less sequence was a favorite for me especially reno if only raider had finished his thought tilly's 20 words was absolute perfection especially her taking permission <laughs> to speak freely i thought the tarina saru spat was handled perfectly and here's hoping we get a wedding before the end of the season i give this one a 6.5 out of 10. maybe yeah, that's like the, that's like rain it in right like that's rain it in level. yeah maybe the finale is the wedding Oh God! Please don't. No, like take <laughs> no. that back. Yeah, I'm take sorry. That no. back. No. Take and back. Michael can't come because she's ascending. Yeah, yep. exactly. God, the, oh the giant God. koala is I, the best man. I want to say that like these third episode is like just making me anxious for the rest of the season. I'm, I'm sorry. Throw, I don't mean to. I'm gonna throw that in up. the middle. Yeah, <laughs> you put this out in the world. I mean, just it's your fault. This episode is yep. fucking fantastic. Uh, can you take Eric the Red's, please? I didn't. Th- I didn't think Michael would descend so early in the season. Um, Eric <laughs> the Red wrote <laughs> an okay episode. The highlight was an 
The highlight was an absolute delight of a performance by Wilson Cruz being Janelle. The whole backstory of the scientists hiding their findings due to fears of how it would be used during the Dominion War makes sense. Project Proteus, anyone? Tilly speaking freely to Rainer was fun and a typical Tilly moment. Tilly's advice to Rainer makes sense given how special a crew discovery is having to bond over being temporarily displaced. Um, I was expecting Tarina and Saru to come into conflict due to the differences in policy, but wasn't expecting the trouble to be with the Vulcan purists. The Romulan and me rolled my eyes finding out. <laughs> the riddle this week turning into a secret test of character to prove that Michael doesn't always choose violence was a clever reveal. Sad to see Grey and Adira break up. Hoping the tension and action rev up next week. Still a little uneasy about the choice of the project. Progenitors. Progenitors. It says projectors on here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Progenitors, especially after Stamets' geek out moment, but still finding myself enjoying the treasure hunt. Nice, nice. I'll read Troubles. Um, not my favorite episode of Disco. Tilly was a badass, like always, which I always love. The away team mission was all right, but not something super unique. I didn't really care for how they did the whole Saroon to arena conflict with a third party character trying to say sway the decision. Nor did I like the Grey and Adira breakup because it's so typical for long distance TV couples, among many other tropes. Um, yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, back to you, Giraffe. Can you take Mars's, please. Mars wrote, getting up at 5 a.m. to watch Discovery was not as hard as I thought it would be. I enjoyed this episode for the Deep Space Nine's nod to the episode Facets and Slugger Cola, plus the Ferengi bartender and going to Trill. Let's keep those DS9 nods coming, folks. I think Wilson Cruz did a great job of playing Junal, and it looks like he had a lot of fun doing it. I enjoyed the political intrigue going on with Saru and Tarina and aspired to have such a healthy, loving relationship. I also love the comedic tension between Tilly and Rainer. So far, I'm enjoying this episode. I sure hope they can keep up the momentum for the whole season. Very nice, very nice. And MCs with Yum Yum Pod, please. Yum Yum Pod wrote, In a perfect universe, we would get Hannah Chessman returning in a big ugly wig and replacing Nilsson on the bridge. This, this episode was a fine time, and I'm glad that Wilson Cruz got to ham it up and that Hugh got to join in the fun because I remember being super annoyed that he didn't come down last time. Gray and Adira breaking up isn't a shock, but I really don't know why they told the story of this relationship and Gray the way they have over the course of the show. Gray has felt more like an afterthought or an idea that never got fully bloomed than a rounded character like he started out as a dead character but then he is brought back to life leaves abruptly and now this it just bothers me that this story was more occupied with spending the time on why the relationship cannot be rather than showing us what a beautiful what is beautiful about this young couple damn straight damn straight yeah. damn straight uh eric take us oh no we actually have one more before that uh taris please <laughs> uh sorry i just read what matt wrote to me that's really funny um Tara wrote, I enjoyed this episode, mostly because of Wilson Cruz and Mary Wiseman's choices and dialogue. I always love seeing Michael and Book teaming up to survive the impossible, and that Sluggo Cola Easter egg had me giddy for some reason. I don't buy, however, that every gearhead, okay, shiphead, is into the Connie class. Uh, seems like predictable no nostalgic BS to me. Couldn't someone be into non-human ship designs or something? Damn straight, yeah. Uh, and now, you're Limerick. 503 Janal. Discovery's off the trail to find the next clue. Janelle's riddle is solved, so it's up now to Hugh. He'll embody the ancient symbiote fix. Um, exactly why are Grey and Adira 86th? At least engagement will be official for Tarina and Saru. Love it. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to steal Giraffe's Thunder here. I will always sit down and have a conversation about the beautiful curves. Curves. I keep mixing my B's and V's tonight. Uh, the beautiful curves of a post uh post coup romulan uh, warbird post shinzon the ones we see dinatra those are mm. those are sexy like mm, i want one give me one anyway uh i guess that leaves it to me i will take it home mm -hmm. with cbfs who wrote i loved everything about this episode every episode of disco this season is my new favorite getting to see this amount of brand new quality trek in 365 days is amazing 
Uh, I hope this is all heading towards a satisfying finale and potential movies. I rewatched The Chase, and again, I am 100% convinced we are looking at a fake out. Me too. I'm still holding out hope. Like, with with hope. the progenitors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the progenitors' intelligent design. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board the fake out red herring train. Um, please and thank you. Whew. Imagine if we had Hawk here, we'd still be going. <laughs> oh, man. That does uh, do it for this one. This was a fun one. Um, I will I will say that this is, listen, um, every now and then there's an episode we don't like and we're going to be honest about it. Just because we're shills for Paramount now does not mean <laughs> that we're going to like <laughs> love every single episode and say this episode is the best one I've ever seen. This episode was kind but, of But, but yeah, Julian, no, if know? anybody calls us shills, we'll yeah. point to my rant on this one. It's yes. like, this is what happens the day we announce. To be yeah. fair, we didn't like this episode, but the best viewing experience was on Paramount Plus. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Which you can go on our website right now, click the banners, and uh, get get I think like a month free. So go check that out. Uh, yeah, we just did that. That was Eric. Bravo. Good job, Eric. Bravo! Yeah. Holy crap! Oh man, people are gonna stop watching. <laughs> oh man, it's the end of the show. People have already. Stopped we'll watching. see you next week for episode five hundred four, which is a banger for MC for draft for Eric. I am Julian. Live long and prosper. Sarcastic Vulcan salute, Majram. Good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.